Okay, going. Okay, salam alaikum, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, today's session is, uh, you know, all of these weekly sessions are sponsored by the Milwaukee Muslim Women's Coalition, as well as our Peaceful Home Program, which we will have information about at the end of the presentation. We are honored here today to once again have part two of our four-part series with Dr. Rita, who is a board-certified psychiatrist and Harvard-trained trauma expert. Um, Dr. Rita is a leading expert in mental health um, of Muslims, immigrants, and refugees. Um, and uh, we're honored to have him. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Reda. Yeah, my pleasure. Assalamu alaikum. It's good to see everybody, mashallah. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulullah. I will do the same like we did last week, inshallah. Uh, we'll talk both in Arabic and in English. So I thought before we start the topic, the topic today is the impact of the current uh, pandemic on um, the emotional wellness or uh, our stress level. So we're going to talk about that, inshallah, and uh, talk about ways how to, you know, cope with stress and maybe, inshallah, uh, come back to our equilibrium, which is our state of balance. But before that, there are two points that I like to touch on very briefly. Uh, one is there is, you know, this uh, common misunderstanding, I believe, that uh, what we are going through is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have been uh, deviant or um, we've been uh, committing lots of sins and Allah is very angry with us. And that's why what we are um, going through is something that we deserve. So subhanAllah, Rasul wasalam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he did not associate, uh, you know, that with the, uh, his punishment. Allah, every time he wanted to test people, he said, uh, you know, ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah gives you a test in order to see uh, how much grace and acts of beauty you can come up with. He doesn't want us to uh, be punished because he's not an angry God that he who loves to punish people. Uh, we believe in our religion that we go through three situations, which is we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we have lots of hope in his mercy. So it's exactly like the relationship that we have with our mother. Moms are very merciful towards you know, their children. So yes, uh, from time to time, they might need to discipline their children. There's lots of love. So the child might you know, take advantage of their mom's love and uh, forgiveness. But also there is lots of hope. The relationship is very safe between a mother and her child. That's what the relationship should be between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sahih nahnu la na'man makar Allah. Sahih nahnu yani na'mal wa nadhunu billahi khayran. Lakin yani mush kul shay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa ilahun ghaadib yuhabbu al-uquba. Wa yani kul shay bi sabab ma aktasabat aydina. Sahih yani adhunub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qal ma asabakum min musibatim fa bima kasabat aydina. Wa qala subhanahu wa zahara al-fasadu fi al-bari wa al-bahri bima kasabat aydina. نحن نؤمن بذلك لكن نؤمن أيضا إن الله مثل ما هو شديد العقاب هو أيضا غفور رحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى قال وإن ربك لذو مغفرة للناس على ظلمهم الله سبحانه وتعالى قال نبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة يعني نحن نعلم أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يبتلي ليهذب لا ليعذب so he will test people to elevate their status in Jannah to remove their sins to you know basically purify them from anything that makes them not worthy of meeting him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that, uh, you know, some people are giving us, you know, messages of pessimism, and it's uh, really discouraging if we say uh, the only reason our mosque is closed is because of something that we did. Because, uh, subhanAllah, we love our mosque so much. I mean, it's not only a place for connection with the Creator, subhanAllah, but also it's a social venue for us to connect with the creation. So, yeah, I mean, um, it's true that we have uh, broken hearts because the masjid is closed, but we also believe that Rasul made it very clear that inside the mosque you find Allah and you see his beautiful and noble face when you do acts of uh, kindness, acts of service. If you, um, you know, cannot go and do tawaf around the Kaaba yes. now, you can do tawaf around the, the houses of uh, the people who are poor and needy, the people who are struggling in your community. This is how Rasul was. Muhammad Can I 
كان يطمئن على أحوالهم فيعني في رسائل تدعو إلى الإحباط تقول أن الله سبحانه وتعالى الآن يعاقبنا بسبب ذنوبنا لكن الله سبحانه وتعالى نحن نعلم أنه شديد الرحمة صحيح شديد العقاب لكنه أيضا شديد الرحمة فأحببت يعني أن أقول أن الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام قال نريد أن نكون مبشرين لا منفرين ميسرين لا معسرين الله سبحانه وتعالى يريد بناء اليسر ولا يريد بناء العسر والرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام قال في زمن النوائب يعني تفعل ثلاث حاجات يعني أمسك عليك لسانك وليسعك بيتك وابكي على خضيئتك so one you know beautiful sentence that our beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said is that when things are difficult in times of calamities and disasters and times like the difficult times we go through right now uh, do three things one is amsik alayka lisanak don't engage in useful um, speech uh, useless speech so any speech that's not use, useful don't engage in it remember i mean uh, if you want to say something Remember, is it uh, something that uh, is true? If it's not true, then don't, don't spread it. Is it something helpful? If it's not helpful, then it's not important. Is it something that's uh, going to cause people to be inspired? If not, then it's not really something you should share. Is it something that's uh, necessary? Is it something that, uh, that's kind? So when we think of the, the word think, it is like, you know, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it uh, necessary and is it kind? If it's not, then there is no need to do it because uh, in Ispanla, Rasulullah he said, if we spread rumors, especially on social media, if we exaggerate, uh, people are already have lots of restless energy. الكثير من الناس يمر بمرحلة قلق جديد الآن. فنريد إن شاء الله أن نخفف عنهم بأن لا ننشر الشائعات، أن لا نضخم الأخبار السلبية. بل بالعكس يعني الرسول عليه الصلاة كان يحب أن ينشر رسائل الأمل والتفاؤل. So let us try to you know, spread message of hope and optimism, inshallah. So this is the first uh, thing I wanted to talk about. So he wanted to us to not spread rumors. And then he said, your house is enough for you. So you don't have to go out unless uh, it's necessary. And we talked about this before. We said that it's very important to abide by the safety protocols that you know, if the city says stay home, then stay home unless it's a, really an emergency. And also, Rasulullah he said, Ibki ala uh, You know, remember that you made mistakes and ask Allah for forgiveness. Because it's like, like a child coming to their mom and asking for forgiveness. The, the child will cry and you say, Mom, can you please forgive me? I will never do it again. And the mom knows that we, the child will make the mistake over and over again and will ask for forgiveness and she will never close her door in his face or her face. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves us to come back to his door every time we make mistakes. The second point I, I wanted to you know, talk uh, about, inshallah, which I have noticed recently uh, on social media that um, people are saying, if you don't take advantage of the time of the quarantine, if, uh, the time of sheltering in, if you are not doing something productive, then and you are wasting your time and it's useless and some people are even saying you have to learn new skill a new language you have to uh, produce material that's productive uh, i'm great you know all of these advice is, is wonderful but remember the mere you know act of survival during act of courage many people are very brave because they are just surviving these are very difficult times so let us not add and People who are struggling, let us not give them more load on their shoulders and tell them, oh, you have not been productive, you know, use this time to actually learn new language or new skill. Yeah, it's wonderful if they can do that, but if they don't do that, uh, let us not be judgmental. Everybody has their own way of coping with trauma. There is no right or wrong way of dealing with grief and loss and trauma. And this is really significant. The pandemic is significant. It's, it's called pandemic. يعني هي سميت جائحة بسبب بسبب أنها يعني كارثة كبيرة يعني ليست مجرد يعني نوبة معينة العالم كله يمر بهذا الوباء نحاول الرفق إن شاء الله لا نضغط على الناس أن نقول لهم أنت لا تستفيد من وقتك في تعلم لغة جديدة أو حرفة جديدة يعني بعض الناس مساكين مجرد أن يحاول أن يحصل على حاجاته الأساسية 
أمر يستحق منا كل احترام وتقدير أمر يستحق كل شجاعة وناس يعني يبذلون أقصى ما في جهدهم حتى يكونوا آباء وأمهات صالحين يعني so let us إن شاء الله try to be kind to one another um, the, the worst thing we can do is uh, spreading this sense of judgment and uh, you know pointing fingers and the, the sense of uh, dividing the community let us you know meet people where they are if somebody cannot do what we can do we th thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can do more and we extend a hand we, we lift them up we don't push them down Rasul alayhi sallam kana yani yarfa al nas wa la yadfa'uhum ila al asfal kana yarfa'uhum ila al a'la wa kana yani alayhi sallatu wa sallam yani yuhawil bi qadr al imkan an yasal biham ila ghayat imkanatihim wa ma khuliqu lahu wa hiya imarat al ard wa istikhlaf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fiha هذه بعض النقاط اللي أحببت أن أذكرها قبل أن ندخل إن شاء الله على يعني موضوع اليوم. So today إن شاء الله and we have the PDF in front of you. I wanted to talk about a few things that have to do with the impact of the corona virus, you know, pandemic on wellness. And because I'm a psychiatrist, I'm going to focus on emotional wellness and spiritual wellness, and we'll talk a little bit about that إن شاء الله. So if you want to follow through with the PDF, you have it inshallah in front of you. So the first thing is, um, what's the definition of stress? And uh, is stress something that we have to really, um, you know, beat ourselves over? You know, إذا كان الإنسان يمر بمرحلة إجهاد أو ضغوط نفسية فهذا أمر طبيعي. Stress is normal to to have a situation that you are uh, having difficulty handling is a really really normal thing so actually so, sometimes a, a dose of stress is even healthy it's something that we um, give us motivation to do better so if, uh, if i have an exam tomorrow i will have a little bit of stress so it will give me a motivation to go and study so rather than you know blaming somebody for having a difficult time because the time is difficult we just, inshallah, try to make them find the balance. If they are not coping in a healthy way, we might give them a little bit of recommendation. If they don't have the tools necessary, we can add a few tools to their toolkit. Uh, so we don't have to do that in a blaming or defaming or naming or, you know, a way that will make people feel bad. Uh, on the contrary, Rasulullah Alhamdulillah. We don't go into extremes. يعني لا نذهب إلى يعني طرفي نقيض. الإنسان إذا كان يمر بظروف صعبة بسبب الوباء، فعلينا أن نتعاطف معه ونقدم له وسائل للتعافي العاطفي والاجتماعي والروحاني. بعض الناس يقول أن يعني الإجهاد أو أنك تمر بظروف صعبة نفسية هذا دليل على ضعف شخصية أو ضعف إيمان، وهذا يعني أمر غير صحيح. So some people they they blame, you know, somebody who's going through a difficult time. They say, oh, you have a weak personality or you have a weak iman. Your faith is not solid. You have to really, um, you know, suck it up and just try to, you know, don't talk about your feelings. If talking about feelings is only for the weak. And this is not how our religion was. There are many ayats in the Quran and many traditions from our beloved Prophet that encourage people to talk about their feelings. Actually, there are like uh, full surahs, like Surah Maryam, one of the you know famous surahs that uh, when Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon them both, when she was going through a difficult time, you know, trying to deliver the baby, she was going through lots of depression. She actually said, "Ya laytani mitto qabla hada. I wish if I have died before this day." So you know, she was having basically suicide thoughts. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reprimand her for expressing her feelings. He actually gave her the remedy for the postpartum depression or the antipartum depression she was going through. He gave her very clear advice. He said, فَكُلِي وَشْرَبِي وَقَرِّ عَيْنَ He said, جُدْ حُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِدَعِ النَّخْلَةِ Exercise, eat healthy, drink healthy, have a good sleep, and then don't engage in gossip or unnecessary talk. يعني من المهم هذا أمر مهم بالنسبة للجالية المسلمة خصوصا يعني حتى نتعافى من وصمة العار المرتبطة بالجانب النفسي والاجتماعي علينا يعني أن نطلع على القرآن والسنة الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة مريم سيدة مريم 
يعني كانت تفكر ان يعني تقتل نفسها قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا فلم يذكرها الله بسوء بل بالعكس قال لها يعني حزي اليك بجذع النخله كلي اشربي قري عينا نامي نوم صحي كلي اكل صحي اشربي سوائل اعملي بعض الرياضه بعدين قال فاما ترين من البشر احدا فقولي اني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن اكلم اليوم انسيه when people engage in useless speech don't engage with them if people are talking bad about you just walk away يعني لا, لا الانسان لا يدخل في ال الأحاديث الجانبية الغير مهمة التي قد تحبط من معنوياته وتفشل من عزيمته وتفتر من همته هذه يعني very very important advice الله سبحانه وتعالى also في سورة الضحى الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام was going through difficult time so الله سبحانه وتعالى gave him lots of relief when he told him you know remember the time that you were going through difficult time because you didn't have enough money or because you were an orphan he reminded him that he died He did have difficult times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at one point, he said, حتى إذا استيأس الرسل Some of the, you know, messengers and prophets, they went into despair because of how much, you know, resistance from their people they faced. فبعض الرسل يعني مروا بمواقف أدت إلى إحباط من عزيمتهم. سيدنا يعقوب يعني لما فقد ابنه سيدنا يوسف عليه السلام يعني فقد بصرة. يعني يضت عيناه من الحزن فهو كظيم. الله سبحانه وتعالى لم يعاقبه بأن قال لماذا تبكي البكاء ليس للرجال الله did not reprimand Prophet Yaqub عليه السلام when he lost Prophet Yusuf he actually cried until he became blind and Allah سبحانه وتعالى reminded him that I will bring your son back to you yes it took a number of years for them to get reunited which is very different than when uh, the mother of Musa عليه السلام when she lost her son immediately Allah سبحانه وتعالى brought the baby back to her because Allah does not like for women to be sad. When a mother is sad, it is really, really heartbreaking, especially if she cannot see her child, if, especially if she's, uh, you know, um, separated from her child. That's why it's very heartbreaking what's uh, happening on the border and refugee camps when families are separated. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يعني, قال لسيد يعقوب, إني سأرد إليك يوسف. قال لسيدة أم موسى, سأرد إليك ابنك. إن الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يحب للإنسان أن يستمر في الحزن لكن لم يعاقب أي منهم لإظهار هذه المشاعر إظهار المشاعر في الإسلام أمر صحي To express your feelings in Islam is a healthy thing Actually, Rasul عليه الصلاة he cried in public and he بكى عليه الصلاة والسلام أمام الصحابة when he lost his wife, when he lost his children and some of the companions they said Oh, Prophet of Allah, even you, you cry and he said this is mercy هذه رحمة وضعها الله في قلبي ومن لا يرحم لا يرحم If you don't show mercy, you don't receive mercy This is what he said عليه الصلاة والسلام So these are a few things to understand before we talk about stress and what causes stress and how can we respond to it inshallah But stress in general, it has, you know, many many causes And yes, we can use the religion as a healing tool But our religion is not the only healing tool. It's one of the tools in our toolkit. It's a wonderful tool, alhamdulillah, to read Quran and to pray and to make mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-salah, al-dhikr, al-istighfar, هذه كل أمور طيبة في عملية الشفاء. ولكن ليس الجانب الروحاني فقط. من أجل الشفاء الكامل نحتاج إلى جانب بيولوجي, جانب عضوي, جانب اجتماعي, جانب نفساني, جانب روحاني. لا بأس من ذلك. In order to reach healing, we have to focus on many, many parts Uh, we call it the bio, psycho, social, and spiritual approach. So uh, I will talk about that, inshallah, uh, a little bit later. But, uh, you know, there are many causes for stress. Some of the causes are internal. So maybe you're thinking about the past that will bring you lots of tears. You're thinking about the future that brings you lots of fears and anxiety. So many people, they don't enjoy today because they don't live in the here and now. They think about the past or the future. So subhanAllah, I cannot change the past, I cannot control the future. So let us try and now and enjoy today for our sake and for the sake of our loved ones. فكثير من الناس يعني ينشغل بالمستقبل أو يحزن على الماضي لكن الأفضل أن الإنسان يعيش في الحاضر يعيش في هذا اليوم ويستمتع به بقدر الإمكان. Yes, there is trauma that can impact people, you know, perception of the here and now. Some people are not safe right now. 
there is domestic violence, there is child abuse, there are, you know, uh, very unfortunate things that happen under the roof of the Muslim house, which is really, really unfortunate, especially during this time that we should use for bonding with our families. And I will talk about this next week, inshallah. But, uh, yani, subhanallah, if we can just try our best to uh, be mindful, we do a little bit of meditation to get grounded in, uh, in the here and now, and we can use grounding techniques. Our religion gives us lots of, uh, in, you know, um, wonderful, wonderful tools to do meditation. We go uh, pray, we do wudu, we do mention, we do meditation through istighfar and tasbih and other acts of worship and spiritual intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. من المهم يعني من المهم في خصوصا في هذه الظروف الصعبة أن بدل الإنسان ما يحزن على الماضي أو يخاف من المستقبل أن يحاول أن يقضي وقته مع أحبته. هذا الوقت مهم جدا سنحكي عن هذا الموضوع في الأسبوع القادم إن شاء الله but some people the, their worst enemy is their own mind so they get trapped in their cognitive triangle what do I mean by cognitive triangle there is a relationship between our thoughts between our feelings and between our actions so it's called the cognitive triangle so it will start with a thought it will become an emotion and eventually a behavior I'll give you an example uh, if I walk out of my house and uh, my neighbor is outside and say good morning Richard and he will not answer me now my thoughts might go into different ways I might say oh Richard is already a racist he doesn't like me or I might say uh, I am somebody who is unlikable anyway so why should he care about me I start to self-loathe and self-punish myself or I can have a more healthy approach and I say subhanallah Maybe Richard did not hear me. Maybe he had a fight with his wife. Maybe he's uh, having a rough morning. I go and check on him. The, the outcome will be completely different because the first thought will lead me to a, a bad feeling about myself or about my neighbor. And then uh, my, I might actually do something to hurt him or hurt myself, you know? So rather than that, if I just change my perspective and we call it cognitive restructure, I, I just go and check on him and make sure my neighbor is also safe especially during these difficult times uh, there will be completely different outcome يعني هذا المثلث المعرفي السلوكي يعني احيانا انا ابدا بفكره وهذه الفكره قد تكون سلبيه احيانا قد يتجاوزني انسان في الطريق maybe there, there is somebody who is speeding and uh, there is a you know somebody who will cut me uh, with his car and then i will have a road rage i will say how dare I go after him, I end up going to jail because of impulsive reaction that was unnecessary. So, just before you act, just pause, take a minute and uh, Think about the consequences. Is it really worth it to go after your neighbor or after somebody who is speeding in the road or after somebody who said something Islamophobic or ignorant or whatever the situation is? Just uh, say, oh, they are going through a rough time. They are the ones who are ignorant. They are the ones who are struggling. Make dua for them and walk away as long as it's safe to do that. I mean, don't get yourself into unsafe situations. Uh, sometimes the stress is external. بعض الأحيان يعني الإجهاد والضغط قد يحصل بأسباب داخلية هذه الأسباب قد تكون يعني خارجية عن إرادتنا يكون إنسان ثاني أو ظروف طبيعية قد تؤدي كما يحصل الآن يعني في فيروس في الجو أحيانا تكون يعني كوارث طبيعية أحيانا قد يحصل عنف بين إنسان وإنسان تحصل حروب تحصل طرد إنسان وتهجيره من بلده so there are many many things that can affect us. Some of them are internal, some of them are external. And the uh, external factors can mean a human factors like interpersonal violence or non-human factors, which is like a you know natural. And people will respond differently. Some of us will respond internally. Uh, I will go into depression, I will shut down, I will isolate, I might even have uh, you know self-harm thoughts, I might do a self-injurious behaviors, might end up in suicide. And that's very, very unfortunate because, uh, subhanAllah, we, nobody in our community should go through this alone. 
everybody should feel that we have a support system. Prophet Yusuf السلام, when he saw his brother, he said, Inni ana akhuka fala I am your brother, so you have no fear, you should not grieve. I have your back, you have mine. As long as we have each other, we should go through this. This is a difficult time, but we will get through it together because we are one family. And uh, you know, some people will go through external manifestations of stress. They will uh, become irritable, agitated, sometimes angry, sometimes even violent. They might hurt others and so on and so forth. And subhanAllah, trauma makes people regress. Regression means uh, to go back into a, a, an age that is younger than your current age. So children who might be traumatized, they might start to suck their thumb or bite their nails or wet their bed, or they want to go and sleep with their mom and, and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, it's very important not to punish these behaviors, but to remember maybe they are manifestations of trauma because people usually regress when they traumatize in individuals and communities. In the communities, they uh, you know, regress in the form of, uh, you know, just being close minded having the in-group, out-group mentality. Everybody who's not uh, one of us is not li really part of our community. Everybody is like an other to us. Everybody is a stranger, not welcome into our small circle. Uh, SubhanAllah, yani, بعض الناس يتصرف بسبب الإجهاد يعني تصرفات داخلية تؤدي إلى الإحباط والاكتئاب وأحيانا حتى الانتحار أو تصرفات خارجية قد يكون فيها قلق قد يكون فيها غضب أو حتى إذاء للغير وعنف سواء منزلي أو اقتناء أسلحة أو استخدام مخدرات أو غيرها من الأشياء. I, I want to pay attention to our children, our youth. Yes, they are vulnerable, but they can be the most resilient, resilient among us if we pay attention to them. Inshallah, I have a whole session, the last one about children, and I hope as many youth can join that session because we're going to talk not only about hormones and peer pressure, but also that our children are going through difficult time now and they're watching us, they're watching our behavior. We need to be a good role model for them on how to cope with the current crisis. Uh, feeling uncertainty and feeling disempowered is something that's very discouraging for the young minds. So I encourage everybody to explain as much as possible to the children. Don't go into the graphic details of what's going on, but at least keep them updated on and inshallah, we'll go through this together. This uh, this pandemic happens every hundred years or so, and people, you know, survived this before. And some famous Sahaba died in the Ta'un and the plague. You know, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, Amin al-Ummah. He was not punished. He was not somebody that Allah disliked. That's why he was afflicted. He was one of the ten people who were promised Jannah. And al-ibtila laysa bisabab uqubam aw ghadab min Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let us make our children part of the situation. I will talk about this in detail the next two sessions, how our children can become part of the solution. If we only see a child as a problem, they will continue to be a problem. We say if you give them the name, they will play the game. So what are the warning signs that uh, when you see them, you really, really need to pay attention and maybe refer the child and the family to more specialized professionals. Alhamdulillah, you, know, you guys have many professional you know, uh, organizations in town that I encourage you to use either for mental health or for domestic uh, violence and stuff like that. So try your best, inshallah, to pay attention to the following. If there is a change in the behavior or the language or the moral uh, or the ethical belief system of the child. So if somebody is talking about you know, suicide or leaving the religion or maybe going to uh, you know, websites that are dangerous or inappropriate, if somebody is uh, questioning the divine intervention or the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is very different from their baseline, then you need to really pay attention, to, especially to our youth harm or engaging in cutting or self-injurious behavior if they're talking about uh, violence or you know trying to buy guns or weapons or they're collecting or hoarding weapons all of these are very important to pay attention to
هذه التصرفات قد تكون اقتناء أسلحة أو تفكير في العنف أو ممارسة العنف أو تفكير في الانتحار أو ممارسة إذاء النفس أو الغير أحيانا قد تحصل تغيرات على عقيدة الإنسان على تصرفاته maybe they don't take care of their you know basic needs or daily daily activities of daily living like showering or they sleep more than they used to they don't eat as much whatever it is they might be going through um, if there is a family that's uh, invested they will pay attention inshallah to their loved one because no one should go through this alone inshallah we'll go through this as a family and as a community and we will come out of corona better version of who we are inshallah كلنا سنتعافى باذن الله uh, يعني ونتعافى نفسيا وروحانيا اذا كنا يدا واحده كعائله كجاليه كامه باذن الله so what can we do that are useful interventions in the case of uh, corona or any other pandemic uh, let us believe in uh, divine destiny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, does everything for his infinite wisdom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لديه حكمة في كل شيء قد لا نفقه حكمته سبحانه لكن يعني الإنسان يطمئن يعني I remember a story that's really really beautiful they said you know a couple they were on a ship and then there was a you know very severe wind and people were freaking out everybody's gonna drown and uh, you know the wife was really you know going hysterical and then her husband was very calm and she said Are you like crazy? Why are you not responding? Why are you not scared? And he said, you know, do you see this knife? And she said, yes. He said, uh, if I put this knife around your neck, would you be scared? And she said, no, I won't. He said, why? <laughs> you have, there is a knife, you know, on your neck. And she said, because the hand that's holding the knife is the hand of somebody that I love and trust. And he said, that's exactly why I'm not freaking out. Because this ship, Our destiny, our outcome of this, uh, you know, um, disaster is in the hand of somebody that we love and we trust. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us go through this with his infinite wisdom. Uh, yes, I know it's really confusing when children are dying, when bad things happen to good people. But we have, you know, the pleasure, inshallah, and the honor of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and knowing everything that is behind his wisdom. أحيانا الإنسان قد لا يفطن إلى الحكمة الإلهية قد يظن أن الله سبحانه وتعالى يظلم وهو سبحانه تنزه عن ذلك لا يظلم الناس شيئا فهو يختبرنا حتى نصل إلى مرحلة الإحسان يبلوكم أيكم أحسن عاملا قال ذلك في سورة تبارك سبحانه وقال خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عاملا يعني حتى في الموت هناك إحسان يعني الإحسان يأتي إن في الصبر عند الصدمة الأولى يأتي بأن العائلة تتعاطف والجالية تتعاطف مع بعضها تأتي بأننا نعمل أعمال إن شاء الله تنفع الفقيد أو الميت وترفع من درجاته ونطمئن على أهله من بعده ونهتم بأولاده All of these are ways how to إن شاء الله strengthen our iman and give us some comfort during these difficult times uh, Optimistic over, you know, overlook of the situation is very important I want you as an adult role model to model this for your children uh, your children the most you know the thing that they will remember the most about uh, the corona covid 19 pandemic is uh, how the family reacted as a family so how their mom and dad reacted how their siblings uh, you know they the impact of uh, what they are going on in their school and the uncertainty about the future but the most important thing is to have a consistent and uh, you know reassuring caregiver And I said this before, maybe you cannot give them assurance that there is no violence in the air, uh, there is uh, maybe unsafe things outside the house, but please, please always make sure the house is a safe house. Maybe I cannot make every space outside my home a safe space, but every space between me and my wife and my children should always be a safe space. Our interpersonal spaces should always be spaces of safety. خارج البيت قد تكون مساحات غير آمنة لكن بيت أن تكون فيها عنف لا لفظي ولا جسدي ولا يعني نفسي ولا عنف من أي شيء لا نؤذي أي إنسان باللسان أو بالفعل يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى and رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم both of them they wanted us to not hurt people with our words or with our hand 
Muslim and Salim and Nas min lisanihi wa yadihi. A true Muslim is the one that everybody feels safe around. And this is actually the meaning of Islam. Many people say Islam has to do with submission or with peace, but Islam, salam is also comes from safety. So whenever I say salamu alaykum, that means you are safe with me and I am safe with you. Another thing that uh, I find very helpful with my children, alhamdulillah, I have three daughters and uh, I have been very blessed to take the advantage of them being uh, doing school online and me coming home earlier after I finish rounding on my patients is to spend lots of time together. So we have structure, we have routine, we have uh, quality family time. من المهم أن الأطفال يكون لديهم روتين يومي يكون لهم جدول يكون جدول مرن طبعا يكون هم جزء في وضع هذا الجدول فيه يعني جزء للعائلة في جزء للراحة الشخصية في جزء للمرح لا بأس من ذلك so I don't force my views on my children or make them dictate everything that they do they don't have to live in my shadows but I want them to always feel warm and protected in my shadow إن شاء الله by being a safe father. So, من المهم يعني أن الإنسان يكون you know ولي أمر آمن أم آمنة أب آمن من المهم خصوصا في هذه المرحلة بالذات. Also to provide them with support system. Remember our children especially they don't go to school. Maybe they don't have easy way to connect with their friends. So maybe they are spending more time on social media. Maybe they really miss their friends. So they're acting out. Uh, and uh, we are giving them names like you are spoiled, you are, uh, you know, entitled, you are, you know, oppositional defiant. We give them labels, but actually they just miss their friends, which is a basic need for children to belong, to be part of a group. So if we can increase our support system, uh, both online and offline, as much as safely possible, and that would be wonderful, inshallah. Maybe they can touch base with their friends a couple times a day or a couple times a week. Maybe as families, we can you know, see each other through video conference, whatever it is that works for you. من المهم يعني أن أولادنا خصوصا يكون لديهم يعني شبكة اجتماعية قوية. الآن الكثير من الأطفال خارج المدارس وقد يعني يحصل يعني يعز عليهم فراق أصدقائهم وزملائهم في الدراسة. فمن المهم أن نوفر لهم يعني إمكانية أن يتكلموا مع هؤلاء الزملاء. صحيح لا يقضون يعني 24 ساعة في اليوم على أجهزتهم الذكية ومواصل التواصل الاجتماعي لكن لا نمنع ذلك بالكلية So we don't go into extremes I don't allow them 24-7 to be on social media but I don't you know, close everything in their face because right now they are struggling and if I can be a part of the relief that I can give to my children why not inshallah كل شيء بحدود طبعا everything comes with a balance Self-care is something that I'm very passionate about. So make sure, inshallah, as a caregiver, that you spend lots of time doing the kind things to yourself. So sleep, healthy. So it's really important. Like you go to bed to sleep. Don't go to bed with your you know, machines and your gadgets and all of these devices. Try your best to, inshallah, have a time that you switch all of your social media off so you can uh, wake up prepared for Fajr and be refreshed in the morning. Also, make sure that you eat healthy, inshallah. This is a time that uh, some people eat more or eat less. This is a time some people, they uh, lose weight or gain weight. This is a time some people, they don't exercise or ex exercise more. So many people are doing many things um, because everybody is different. This is a big spectrum. But as long as you are doing something healthy and kind to your body, to your mind, to your soul, Please do that. If you are engaged in unhealthy behaviors or destructive behaviors, try to find healthy alternatives, inshallah. And uh, you know, something that I find very helpful is uh, to check on your community and do acts of kindness and service and grace. If you are very graceful, لو تخدم مجتمعك إذا كنت تطمئن على جيرانك إذا كنت تطمئن على الجالية من حولك هذا يرفع من يعني الشعور بالمتعة الروحانية. So this is a one reason uh, how, inshallah, you finish a view. So these are some of the ways that I thought are helpful. If we can, inshallah, move on to the, the next section. I will be very brief here because we like to have a discussion with you. But uh, I thought, you know, there are parts of the pandemic that we don't pay attention to. 
and they are very, very important and they are intersected. So I thought I will share a little bit with you. I, I came up with 19 different uh, sects of the community that right now maybe they are affecting us or we don't uh, really know much about their suffering and given that we are one big village, a global village right now, I think everybody is really a complementary to everybody else. So for you know the hospitals, I, I noticed that some people avoid the hospitals, other people they rely very heavily on the hospitals right now. Some people don't have their health insurance, many clinics are closed. The healthcare industry right now is really um, going through a rough time. Um, there are medical updates on, on every second, basically. We see a sharp increase in many situations and conditions. And being a psychiatrist, I, I see sharp increase in depression and despair and anxiety and fear and anger, domestic violence, child abuse, substance use, even suicide uh, thoughts and behaviors. And all of these are unfortunate, you know, because we really, at this point, we need to pay attention to each other and try our best to support one another. Anybody who comes to me as a psychiatrist means they missed the people in, in, the, in the bottom of the pyramid. So the top of the pyramid are the professionals who, uh, you know, we are very few in number, and usually our services are very small and unique, and we have a small scope of practice. But uh, everybody can really receive the support, hopefully they need, through their family, their community, through paraprofessionals, through, through people who, uh, give them lots of uh, social support and uh, that's something that we miss about our religion and we miss when the you know massages are closed i, I said yes and the, the masjid closure has been really really um, very heart breaking for me but i try to compensate that by saying let me pray with my family more let me do acts of uh, spiritual intimacy with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let me also and know that Allah is not only found in the masjid. I will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also outside the masjid when I go and uh, visit people and check on them and fulfill their needs. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I know there are people who consider mental health issues as only magic or the acts of uh, supernatural or evil eye. And, uh, you know, none of that is something that Rasul said or practiced. He, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Allah ma anzala da illa wa anzal lahu dawa. There is a disease. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought many diseases, including diseases of the mind. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought lots of cure. With every disease, there is a cure. And uh, Rasul, alayhi salatu wasalam, he never told the Sahaba who were struggling or going through a rough time that, uh, you know, get over it, or uh, this is only from the shaitan, or go make wudu. He actually was the best counselor, was the best person to mend broken hearts he would sit down with everybody struggling in the masjid uh, you know people with mental illness would come and talk to him and he would say you know give me your hand and uh, go to any street in the medina to talk with you and people with epilepsy people with mental retardation people with physical and um, mental uh, you know disadvantage all of them rasulullah paid special attention to them he was very busy with them more than people who are rich and affluent and healthy because even when he spent a little bit of time with the rich and he ignored the blind man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded him and became the voice of the voiceless. Allah spoke up on behalf of uh, the blind man and reprimanded the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, Asbar nafsaka rabbahum. Just be patient with those who are forgotten, living in the shadows, the poor, the destitute, because these are the people that bring barakah to the ummah. There's lots of blessings that are coming from these people. These are the people who have direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them might you know, raise their hand and Allah will remove the whole corona thing because they have so much intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And maybe they are not known by name on earth, but they are known by name in the heaven. مَجْهُولُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَجْهُولُونَ فِي السَّمَاءِ هُنَاكَ أُنَاسِ يعني سبحان الله أعراض نفسية فقط بتأثير أو بسبب الشيطان أو غيرها وهذا يعني كلمة حق أريد بها باطل نحن نعرف أن السحر مذكور في القرآن أن العين حق نعرف أن الشيطان يعني يتخبط الإنسان من المس وغيره 
لكن نعرف أيضا بأن الله ما أنزل داء إلا أنزل له دواء نعلم أن المصطفى عليه الصلاة والسلام كان طبيب القلوب ولم يكن يعنف أي شخص يمر بأزمة نفسية فكان يجلس معه ويخفف عنه ويمسح جراحاته ويطيب خاطره بأبي هو وأمي صلى الله عليه وسلم So this is one uh, thing that uh, I thought about the medical industry. So rather than you know seeing people who are going through rough time as somebody who's weak or somebody who just needs to read more Quran or pray, pray more salawat, let us inshallah also give them other ways to cope. So I, I said let us focus on their biological aspects, their social aspects, their psychological aspects, in addition to their spiritual aspects inshallah. Uh, remember also something about the hospitals that uh, there are people who are taking care of uh, you and nobody knows their names. Our nurses, our physicians, some of them they cannot touch their children or hug them. Some of them they send their spouses to other states because they don't want to infect them. And there are people who are mujahideen, murabiteen, people in the front lines. They need our support and dua, inshallah. So the best thing you can do for them is to stay home, you know, so you don't get them more work or you don't get more people infected or people dying and stuff like that. Uh, also, when it comes to Nidham uh, al the educational system, uh, I thought many children are right now restless because, you know, there was a routine, there was a structure for them, and now they are left for you know, us to be their teachers. And uh, subhanAllah, many of us, we found uh, that uh, it is very difficult to be a teacher. So we need to appreciate our teachers and inshallah show them the support that they need after the crisis is over. We need to go and support our schools, Islamic schools, public schools, uh, private schools, doesn't matter. من المهم يعني أن نهتم بشريحة المعلمين. الآن كلنا أصبح معلما لأطفاله في ظل هذه الظروف. لكن التعليم مهنة صعبة. يعني المعلمين يأتون بعد الأنبياء. يعني أمانتهم أمانة ثقيلة. Also, subhanAllah, I thought, you know, even though that uh, we see the masjid as a place of safety, uh, we see that layer is taken away from us. In New Zealand, that layer was taken away of safety when somebody walked into the masjid, started shooting. But right now, our masjid are closed. and We miss that, you know, safety net. But uh, let us prepare when they are reopen, and they will reopen very soon, to be worthy of our masajid, inshallah, to support our masajid more, to be more involved and more attached to them, to invite our children and uh, not be harsh on our women and people with special needs when they come and pray and they make noise. It's okay. This is the house of Allah. Everybody is invited. من المهم يعني الآن بعض الناس يشتكي يقول منهم من عهد الله لين أتانا من فضله لن الصدقان ولا نكوننا من الصالحين. Some people are saying, if Allah only gives me one more chance, لو الله بس يفتح المسجد من جديد سيرى مني ما يحب. I will show him how much that I appreciate his house, how much I'm going to be a better Muslim, and so on and so forth. This is what uh, you know Anas ibn Nadar did. You know when uh, he said, I missed the Battle of Badr, but if I live until the next battle, لا يرنا الله مني ما أفعل. I will show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala some, something that he will be pleased with. So let us, inshallah, Allah gave him a chance to fight in the Battle of Uhud, and he died there, and uh, he did really a good job defending the Prophet So let us also promise Allah when the masjid is open that we are going to be a better Muslim, better American citizen, better neighbor, better husband, better father, better mom, better children, better siblings, and you know, better caregivers, whatever you are doing, uh, your job should, you do it much more, inshallah. Because in Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنْ يَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ عَشْرُونَ صَابِرُونَ يَغْلِبُ مِئَتَيْنَ You can do ten times what you are doing right now. But then he said, الْآنَ خَفَّفَ اللَّهُ عَنْكُمْ وَعَلِمَ أَنَّ فِيكُمْ ضَعْفًا فَإِنْ تَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ مِئَةٌ صَابِرَةٌ يَغْلِبُ مِئَتَيْنَ But the least you can do is double what you do now. You have the potential to do ten times what you do now but at least do the double of what you reopen, inshallah. Uh, talk about, you know, about, uh, you know, how to, inshallah, appreciate the people who are providing our food, to check on the homeless, to check on people struggling with addiction, 
uh, check on our newcomers, the refugees, uh, our uh, you know uh, elderly, you know people, our police appreciate them, uh, people who are making sure life goes on on a daily basis, the uh, people who are collecting our trash or taking care of our electricity and water, support our local government, check on the animals, make sure we are nice to the environment, um, make sure that we appreciate the people who are giving us transportation, and uh, don't see the, the you know, cyberspace as the enemy. We are moving towards the cyberspace more and more, and I expect more uh, you know, after the corona pandemic that we are gonna be more busy uh, electronically. So let us not see the uh, websites as the enemy, don't see technology as the enemy, and for sure not see our children as the enemy. العالم الإلكتروني يعني فرض نفسه لم يعد عالما افتراضيا فسيكون يعني هناك المزيد من يعني المعرفة الإلكترونية في المستقبل القريب فلا نرى القطاع الإلكتروني على أنه هو العدو ولا نرى أطفالنا على أنهم هم الأعداء also very important is the you know social services especially uh, you know human services people who are involved in the foster care system people going through child abuse or domestic violence if we can, inshallah, just appreciate that what's taken away from us because uh, we took everything for granted and Corona came and made us know that we are nothing without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are nothing without loving each other. Like this social distancing is not a death sentence. It's not a social death sentence. It's only a physical distance. So make sure, inshallah, you actually bond more with people, connect more with them. Uh, it's not a social distance, it's a distant socializing, inshallah. So with that, uh, I, inshallah, I want to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This uh, nightmare will be over soon. And inshallah, I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, I am uh, aware that uh, um, in five minutes that Brother Omar Sulaiman and the uh, Yaqeen Institute have a wonderful workshop about uh, family dynamics in the time of Corona, <laughs> the same one that we're going to give next week. And uh, inshallah, you know, I invite you to join, inshallah, uh, Brother Omar Suleiman and the Yaqeen team. Any question or comment, inshallah? Thank you, um, Dr. Rida. If you guys have any questions, I remind you that the chat is open uh, for your questions. And that is also where we have um, uploaded his uh, handout so you can download them right straight from your chat site um and Dinan has joined us uh, if you have any anything to add i just wanted to know to just uh summarize thank you dr Rita. again this has been a uh, time of reflection and what i took away from it is the routines we've had mothers call us as well telling us how frustrated they have with their children and i remind them the same thing especially little children they need routine they need a time for snack, a time for naps, a time to go out and walk. Um, also, um, when you said that the children will remember this most of how they will spend time with their family, how their family handled that. And exactly. that, is, that is true. So you want those memories for your children to be good memories, uh, for them to reflect back when they're older and, and, and enjoy that time. Say, so, yes, it was, it was historic. We were quarantined. But boy, they, you know, we had a lot of fun with my mom and dad and my, my brothers and sisters. And you also had mentioned about the balance, making sure everyone has a balance, not just the kids between, you know, social media and them doing other things. Um, so that's important as well. And the appreciation for teachers. Uh, I know there's some teachers listening and healthcare workers as well. They're doing a lot of a um, lot of risky putting their lives in danger for us so we need to appreciate all of them and yes i'm glad that people are starting to understand that it's not an easy job to be a teacher yes, um, and yes. one thing uh, sister basim like um, you mentioned mashallah which is you know s some parents might be frustrated with their children but i heard something beautiful which is you know al-ahsan annak tajri wara awladak wa la annak tajri bihum it's better to run after your children rather than run with them to the hospitals and they are always sick or maybe you you of illness. So alhamdulillah, if your family is yeah. healthy on our nerves from time to time, but subhanAllah, this is what family is about. We tolerate one another. And also remember, it's really a blessing that we are asked to shelter in place. We 
are not being bombed or asked to leave our homes because yes. we are refugees or if there is a, a disaster that's striking us, uh, you know, subhanAllah. So, alhamdulillah, fi kull, you know, mehna fi tayyati minha, fi kull alam yulad min rahimihi al-amal, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khair, ya Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. And we wanted to remind our listeners um, that this is a time, unfortunately, where there's been a huge surge in domestic violence. The UN just came out with a report stating that uh, Wisconsin is no different. So their um, shelters are getting high numbers of calls. We've gotten some calls. Uh, so please remember that we are here as a resource for the community. And if you see our last slide, uh, even though our building is closed, uh, we do take appointments, and these are the crisis lines, the 727 and the 841. Uh, you can call those and you can text those lines as well. It is confidential and anonymous, so nobody will um, know anything. And even if you just want to talk, some people don't, are not ready to you know, do anything. You just want to vent about your situation or get some safety planning or just get some education. See what's, what are the resources out there, uh, just so you know. Knowledge is power, as always. And then we want to just remind some, uh, everyone about our upcoming sessions. Tomorrow, we have uh, Samia Khan, our um, clinical um, mental health counseling intern. She's giving um, a session tomorrow at 1 p.m. Then the IRC that usually met, meets in our building every week will be meeting in Zoom on Monday. They are currently discussing uh, the book, a wonderful book, Muhammad, Prophet of Peace Amid the Clash of Empires by Juan Cole. And they'll be discussing chapter four. You don't have to be, if you wanna just come in and listen, which I will be doing, uh, because before I never had time to actually go in so, so late. Uh, but you know, now that it's online, we can just enjoy uh, their discussions. And then of course, Dr. Rida, is coming back on Wednesday and he will be talking again about the family dynamics and uh, following um, starting Friday next week we're going to begin we thought enough of this um, over seriousness all the time let's let's have some fun and let's just get together and uh, cook something so we're going to have a, a wonderful member of our community many of you know her sister Tekla will be coming in and she'll be teaching us how to do something and that should be especially uh, helpful now that we're thinking of new things to do for Ramadan that's coming up uh, so that will be Friday this Friday um, not to, no, not this Friday, the following Friday, but every Friday from then afterwards. Janam, did you want to say something to just uh, see us off? Um, no, d thank you very much, Dr. Dada, once again. Just yes. a wonderful uh, uh, session, very uplifting. I think that's uh, really what, what we're all looking for during this time. Um, and I think, you know, people really need to, to take it to heart. Um, uh, as a person that's usually on the go all the time running, um, this has been, this has kind of been a <laughs> sort of like nice vacation. <laughs> so, so it's not all bad. There's a lot of things I, I got to actually declutter, start decluttering some, yeah. some of my files and things like that. So, so it's an opportunity to do things that you might not normally do. And of course, to be at home uh, with, the, with the family is always, um, it's always really good. And I think, I think most importantly, the message that you left us with is that, you know, nothing happens without, without Allah's uh, knowledge and, and presence. And so we have to accept it. This is part of uh, Iman, really. I, I believe it's, you know, uh, accept it as it is and do the best with it. And um, um, we're, not, we're not judged on the results. We're judged on our reaction to what, what comes to us. So, so I think this is this is a wonderful lesson. And again, I hope everyone will join some of the other upcoming sessions. Um, as a center that usually has people coming and going in events and groups meeting, this has been very different. But it's given us an opportunity to continue to have some uh, um, events and continue that uh, connection. So, so thank you, and and we look forward to having you next week Wednesday as well. Thank you.